Hi y'all, my name is Missy and today I have a book review of a really good book in my personal opinion. It is H2O by Virginia Bergen. So first off, can we just gush a moment about this cover? I really think that this cover is very unique and very different. I've never heard of this author, Virginia Bergen, and this is her very first book. This is her debut book. And I was cruising, I think it was Barnes and Nobles, and I saw this book and the cover immediately attracted me. It's very different and very unique and I love it. And it, it it's like um, got burn holes like through the cover. And then when you open it, it's like a raindrop with a portion of the book inside of it. So I thought that was very unique. Um, I have to be honest with you, it's really what drew me in to this book. And once we get started into the book, the book is written in a very unique way. So the cover really matches the storyline, so to speak, of the book. And I super, super enjoyed that. It's so refreshing to read a book that's written in a different way because usually it's first person or third person. It was first person, but it was a different kind of first person. She was talking to you, the reader. So Ruby, the main character of this story, was expressing what was happening through her eyes. So it was written first person, so you know her emotions, you know her feelings, and then you're really into the book, and then all of a sudden she would just begin to talk to you, the reader. So I thought that was so unique and so cool. And then there was just this one little other part, if I can find one, yeah, here's one, where um, she, Ruby, explains to you, the reader, that because of her mom always told her that cursing was ugly and it wasn't attractive and she didn't want her to do it because this is a 16 year old girl she decided to honor her mom in the retelling of this very traumatic story that wherever there would be a place where a cuss word would be she's going to put something beautiful there instead to honor her mom so she chose butterflies <laughs> all throughout this book which i thought was so cool Wherever there should be a cuss word, whether she wanted to say it or somebody was cussing in the book or whatever, she puts these butterflies. I hope you guys can see that. See the butterflies? So that is just so unique in itself. That was so cool. So that was, and to know that, you know, when you're reading it, you remember in your head, oh yeah, she explained, Ruby talked to the reader and explained why the butterflies are in there because she wanted to honor her mom and not cuss. <laughs> I thought that was so unique. And you know, I love YA, which is young adult. So for even the author to make Ruby not curse, sorry, my phones are going off, you know, not to curse was wonderful because you know I have young kids I have a 13 year old and a 17 year old and I don't want them reading a whole bunch of foul language either so that's such a wonderful way you know to take away the curse words but know they were kind of in there I don't know I just thought that was so unique and so different so right away those really appealed to me the cover the style of the writing that it was very unique not only in the cover but in the writing and i love unique i love different so that definitely was a big thumbs now, up now a little bit about the storyline of the book so the book opens up with her speaking to you ruby speaking to the reader that this was a very traumatic thing that happened in her life it changed the whole world she's going to tell you from her point of view and she promises to be completely honest and is not going to leave anything out so she speaks to you the reader tells you all of that and then goes right into um, the night that this happening came about so Ruby Morris and her dream beau are at a friend's house and they're having a party because it's a holiday and it just so happens that Ruby and her major crush, Casper, end up in a hot tub alone together. And Ruby is your 16, you know, your typical 16 year old girl. So to be left alone in the hot tub with like your major crush, I can just imagine I'd be like, yeah. And then he motions her over and Ruby has her, ver her very first mind blowing kiss because it's her dream guy. Like she's just in bliss heaven. Casper kissed her in the hot tub. And while she's in this moment of total ecstasy, <laughs> 
that friend's parents come running onto the scene and is yanking all of these kids into the house. And you know, Ruby is your typical 16 year old girl. She doesn't want to leave her cell phone and everything outside, but the parents are just like, you got to get in the house. So right off the bat, it's extremely exciting. You're very intrigued and you want to know what happens. So all the kids end up in the house and as they're in the house, nothing works. The internet's down, the um, nothing works. Everything's just down. Nothing that's the norm is the norm. And all of these kids are kind of like their version of the boonies. They're way out there. They don't know what's going on. The kids are trying to get on the internet. They're trying to find out nothing's happening. And it is pouring outside. It is raining. And the parents kind of don't know what's happening, but they got wind of something, but they don't tell the kids what it is. So all the kids want to go home, da, 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 da. But the parents are like, no, no, we can't go outside. You can't go outside. So in your mind, you're knowing the parents know something and you're just like, just spit it out already. I want to know what's going on too. <laughs> That's how the kids feel. So what happens is, is that Casper goes over to Ruby and is like, I'll sneak outside and, you know, and go grab my MP3 player. I don't want to leave it out there because Casper um, is an up and coming um, artist. He sings and plays in a band and he doesn't want to leave his MP3 out in the rain because it has all of his tracks on it. So he sneaks out the back door after the parents told all these kids at this party not to go outside. So Casper sneaks back, you know, sneaks out into the rain, comes back in and is like all happy. You know, he got it. He's dripping wet with rain and he kisses Ruby and walks away because the parents are beginning to make some tea because they're trying to calm the kids down with tea. So at about five minutes after that, Casper begins to like seize and moan and begins to bleed. And they all put him off to the corner. They do not understand what's happening to them. But you can tell throughout the book that the parents kind of knew what was going on. And he just begins to bleed. And he's in extreme pain. And he's just not right. And then Ruby's lips where they kiss begins to tingle and not feel right. Something's wrong. So the mom decides that she's going to put Casper in her car and take him to the hospital. Even though her husband is like, no, 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 no. Well, Ruby decides that she's not going to stay and that she's going to go with Casper to the hospital. But the mom ends up taking her home to her house. And that is really where the story picks up. And I don't want to give too much away, but I'm telling you, this is a this is a ride. <laughs> so what ends up happening is something is wrong with the rain. I think you probably could gather that there is something in the rain that makes you bleed and basically kills you. <laughs> that is the very interesting part and I'm not going to give that away. You have to read the story to find out what is in the rain that can do that to you. But it changes the entire world because all of their water supply becomes contaminated. Um, they can't drink from the spigot. They can't be out in the rain. They can't touch the rain. They can't touch the infected. Um, it was a holiday. Everybody was out barbecuing and it began to rain out of nowhere. So if you can just imagine what that is, and it's Ruby's story of her survival and what happens to her family and all of her friends and how she's going to survive this end of the world epidemic kind of thing. So <laughs> it is very interesting. Um, I love how you get really into the story and then all of a sudden it switches up a little bit because Ruby begins to talk to you. She begins to tell you like, I really want to tell you this part, but it's really hard for me because of such and such and such and such. And then it brings a deeper um, connection almost to Ruby when she does decide to tell you what that thing was that was really hard to tell you. So it was really, really cool. At the end of the book, <laughs> she has many, many adventures trying to survive. And one of the things that I felt, I feel like I can tell you that wouldn't be too revealing is that she has a really big heart. And as all these devastating things go on in her neighborhood, there's a whole bunch of animals in everybody's houses. And how her heart is just for all these animals. But at the same time, I can so relate because your neighbors are your neighbors and you don't want to break into their house and you're, you're being trying to be very respectful. But at the same time, you don't know if they're alive or dead. You see their animals in their house. Everybody's dying around you. The world is in complete chaos. 
how would you take care of these animals? Should you leave these animals in the house to die? Like that's just a little glimpse of what's going on in this book. All these big decisions. Should I save these animals? Should I just leave them? If I save them, how am I going to take care of them? Kind of thing. It was so good. It was such an emotional pull and tug like on your heart. Like I really could put myself in Ruby's shoes and be like, I'd be just as conflicted as she was. So the book ends at a big cliffhanger. <laughs> You're just like, oh, but it was so good. So I didn't waste any time whatsoever. I already got Storm. So I'm going to begin to read this today. I'm super excited about it. Again, the cover is just as beautiful. It's the same kind of principle. It has um, smaller little drops with words in it. I thought that was unique. I love these covers. I really do. I love these covers. So I got the next. I'm really excited to read this storm. Um, this is her debut book, Virginia Virgin. I guess I don't know if it's a trilogy yet. I have no idea if there's another one or if it's just two or whatever. But these are her debut books, and I have to tell you, they are really, really good. I'm trying, I'm kind of curious to see how many pages are in this one. 324 so it's pretty much it's about the same I think there was like a little over 300 pages in H2O as well but they're such quick reads I have to tell you I read that book in a day I couldn't put it down like I had to know what happened to Ruby <laughs> and all of the people that she meets you know as the time goes on so if you guys see these books and it sounds interesting and you like that um end of the world kind of thing. I have to tell you, most people think end of the world stories always have to do with zombies. This is not about zombies. When you die, you die. You stay dead. You don't raise again and come back. That th These books are not about zombies. It's about the end of the world kind of thing because of what's happening with the rain. It has to do with very natural um, aspects. Nothing like the government release something and you know it kills you for a little while and then you come back as a zombie. It's not a zombie books. Because <laughs> most people associate the end of the world kind of books with zombies. There's no zombies in here. When the rain gets you, you're dead. And you stay dead. Which to me kind of is more devastating because <laughs> You know, you know, like it's permanent. And it's so funny too because there's even a reference in H2O when Ruby meets up with one of her friends. He kind of even says to her, he's like, it'd be so much easier if this was like a zombie outbreak because we would know what to do. <laughs> I, I'm i very familiar with zombies because of our culture. I do not know what to do because it rains. I thought that was very interesting and very funny that they, you know, that that was even in the book because that's the first thing you think is zombies when it's the end of the world, but it's not zombies. So it's just a pre-warning. But anyways, if you like those peril, very fast paced, end of the world, survival um, kind of books, I think you're really, really going to love H2O. I haven't read Storm yet. I'm going to start it today. I hope it's just as good. I hope it gets better. I hope I get some answers because you do not have all the answers by the end of H2O, which always makes for a great book when you got to read a sequel. So anyways, not to ramble on and on and on. I definitely give this book five stars, two thumbs up. It was a wonderful book. Kudos to you, Virginia Bergen. What a wonderful first book. Your writing style is fantastic in my personal opinion. I love the very unique and different way that you brought this book about. You really feel like at parts you're reading Ruby's diary, but yet you're reading first person into the story, if that makes sense. It's really hard to explain, but it's really, really cool. So again, I'm rambling. I get so excited over books. I can talk and talk and talk and talk about books, so forgive me. But anyways, H2O. Virginia Virgin. Definitely check it out if you're interested in these kinds of books. It is a YA. Um, I don't know what you classify it. I don't think it's, I guess, it, no, I don't think it'd be fantasy. I think it'd just be YA fiction. So just check it out. Good books. I highly recommend them. Um, if you'd be interested in hearing about Storm, um, let me know. Leave me some comments down below and I'd be more than happy to review that for you as well probably in like a day or two because if it reads like the first one I'll be done with it in no time. So I'll be back another day, hopefully with some kind of video, maybe another book review, and I will talk to you guys then. You guys have a great day. See you then. Bye.